we do welcome you here today. We're going to open with um, another song. Rebecca, thank you so very much for um, your gift of music, if you'll excuse me for a moment. Um, we are going to start with Flow to You. It's not connected into the... Into the oh, did you stick music in that? Or did you get no. the put keys in that? No, it's not yet. Okay. So we are, um, we are blessed this morning with Rebecca's talent. Thank you again, Miss Rebecca. We appreciate you. Thank you. Um, the other thing is, if you're not here today, you miss something wonderful. Jet brought donuts. There you go. And I haven't had one yet. I am saving mine for the end of the service, but it's the good of her stuff, as Patty has reminded us. So our, um, yeah, stalling, I'm pretty good at that. But our <laughs> first song, our opening song, is Flow to You. And you're going to hear a couple of things in our music today. You're going to hear that uh, Kathy and Mo can throw their voice and their piano skills. And Rebecca and a drummer, uh, Rebecca can throw her flute skills. And a drummer that doesn't exist in person. So that's what's going to happen in our, in our music today. But we have our opening song called Flow to You. <coughs> Turn up some more. Scots-Irish and, I don't know, uh, other things, and so I'm like, yeah, I like holidays with me. I like those, but uh, it is St. Patrick's Day, and if you are of, um, if you are of Irish descent, I know that this is a, a special holiday for you as well. My 
we want to welcome you to worship today. Um, we are incredibly blessed to have you here. Um, we're just regular folks who believe that God's love is for everyone. No matter who you are or how you self-identify, God's love is for everyone. Bible study continues this Tuesday, March 19th at 7 p.m. and in person and on Facebook Live. I still haven't gotten the Zoom link together, but as soon as I get it, I'm going to pass it on to you so that we can have greater connection and community with each other. Our next monthly birthday fellowship will be on March 24th. This is a, a, a change from uh, what we usually do because March the 31st is Easter. And folks will either be out of town or we'll have special stuff going on that day. So we decided that we're going to do it next Sunday. Um, Rhonda's, Rhonda McCray is bringing the cake. Not this Rhonda. No, I don't want Rhonda to bring the cake. I'm going to call up the grocery store and say, make it for me. But, you know, Rhonda <laughs> McCray makes amazing cake, y'all. Look, out there in Cyberland, if you have never experienced a Rhonda McCray cake, you got to come just for the cake. All right? You got to come. She's going to bring the cake, and all attending are asked to bring a snack, um, a goodie to share. Um, Roanoke Pride is coming. It's April the 20, I think I said 26th through the 28th. Um, it's on that Saturday, okay? Um, and uh, it's from 12 to 7 at Elmwood Park. And we are going to be a part of that twice. We have been asked to do the worship service that morning. I still have not uh, finalized plans for that, so as soon as I know, you will know. Um, be on the lookout for a Pride Event Committee meeting. We, um, in our planning event yesterday with the board, Pride is one of those things that we talked about um, and that we need to be a part of and be, in, uh, be a part of in new and broader ways. That's the only way I can describe it. Um, and we're gonna need all hands on deck. As many that can possibly be at Pride, we need you. Um, so be on the lookout for a Pride event committee meeting starting probably that first or second week of, uh, of April uh, at today's Board of Directors meeting <coughs> right after service. Uh, the Board of Directors is going to talk about Pride as well. Our pennies for Lent is going strong. Uh, don't forget we got our chicken. For those, of you, for those of you at present, we got our chicken and the eggs. I don't know which one came first, the chicken or the egg, but we know we got both of them. That was supposed to be funny. Um, <laughs> and, uh, so I know some of y'all are like me and have change in your car, right? Uh, or maybe a tiny little change jar or something at your house. Maybe you got some in your, in your couch cushions. Just bring them all in. And the reason why we're doing this is for the rescue mission. Um, it's my understanding that it takes 10 cents to offset the cost, cost of a meal for attendees. And based upon that heavy old chicken over there, we, we must have at least $5 over there now. Um, and so we're going to get that counted hopefully this week um, over at the, our bank, the church's bank. They'll, they'll count it for us. But that thing is heavy. And um, I'm excited about what we're going to be able to do for people and the rescue mission. Um, so also in your uh, announcements and look out on Facebook Live for some information as well, um, we have a list of upcoming events. You see them there, the board of directors meeting today after worship on Sunday, Monday, Thursday, you see those. And we do not have a time yet for Easter sunrise service. Valley uh, Community Church, which gives us, well, they don't give us, they, they allow us to rent space from them. Um, and they do give. They give us, um, they give us so many blessings. And, and just, they're amazing. So I don't want to, I don't want folks to feel like I'm disparaging them because they are incredible hosts. Um, we are doing Sunrise Service jointly. Uh, Rebecca has said she would mind being a part of that. In fact, she smiled real broad just now. Um, Anytime that Rebecca plays, it's always a blessing for us. And others have decided to be a part of that as well. Mm -hmm. So be on the lookout for an exact time. Sunrise service means sunrise, but we want to gather before sunrise. 
And if it's as chilly as it was last year, we're going to have a contingency plan to bring it inside. So, Patty, don't you worry, baby. We got you covered. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Oh, I know that. <laughs> Patty says she's tough. So, thank you for being here today again. Um, what, a, what an amazing blessing it is to share worship with you today. So, Liz? I did put that slide in. Y'all, for the last month, I have forgotten to put the Peace of Christ slide in there. Thank you for being here. Let's continue worshiping as we do share the Peace of Christ. Um, somebody said that we, we love on each other about 14 times before we ever get to the Peace of Christ. So let's make it 15. The Peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Go love on somebody. Don't forget about the camera and the folks out there. Hey there, everyone. We are so very thankful that you're joining us today. I hope you can see my big head. Um, but thank you for being here today. Um, we pray that you have a blessed worship service, whether you're joining us here now live or whether you're going to watch this at another time. Thank you so very much for joining us in worship. We absolutely miss you when you are not here. Um, I just, we miss you. And we hope that we can join together in worship soon. I pray that you have a beautiful, blessed day and a beautiful and blessed week. And the peace of Christ be with you. Peace of Christ. Okay. Well, yep, we're going to continue in music. Um, we are going to continue with every praise. It's a rather um, easy praise uh, praise song. It's one of actually one of my favorite songs ever. And um, so here we go. Oh, hold on. Try to catch it. No, might sorry, want to turn wrong one. Wait a minute. Uh, sorry, track two. You might want to... There, I got it. All right, okay, okay, go on. Thank you, Liz. <laughs> Again, you all did 
beautifully. And as we move into our prayers and praises, have in mind some of the things that you're uh, thankful for, as well as the prayers. Um, I had a, a, some came in, um, praises and, and things like that. Um, I do want to say that we've had a request for folks that have um, uh, some illnesses going on, um, and it's, uh, it's pretty serious. One is cancer, um, and can I just say cancer stinks? That's not the word I want to use, but cancer stinks. And uh, so we've got some folks who have friends that have been diagnosed with small cell cancer. Wow. Um, Rabbi Kathy Cohen, it's my understanding that she, uh, she's a friend of our church, that she continues to heal. Uh, she had an unexpected neck surgery. Um, and also for her uh, little four-legged friends, her four, her four, her babies, because I know that they can't interact with mama the way they usually do because of the surgery, so they, they've got to be missing mama in that way too. Um, do we have any other prayers that we, yes, Liz? Please let put my daughter, Emily Anderson, in your prayers. I do not know what's going on. Okay. I just know that it's, for her, pretty serious. Yeah. She chewed me out so hard on Saturday, but she doesn't do that anymore. And so it has to have been something that really hit her hard somewhere oh. and personal. So yeah. I'll find out, but I haven't yeah. found out yet. So please put her in prayers. Yeah, when people don't act like they normally act, it's, uh, yeah, that mm -hmm. tells you something's happened. Any other prayers? Yes, Mr. Mike. My great niece is going through it. I do share her little boy's videos on um, on Facebook, but she has had, he was three months premature, mm -hmm. and she went through a major surgery to get him, and now she is, I don't know if it's postpartum, but you know, being a woman or a mother, you're not only just a mother, you're the decision maker, you're the go-to person, you get everybody's schedules lined up, you're a chauffeur. Right, you wear many hats. Many, many, and she's been right. struggling the past week or so. I mean, she's been really struggling, so if you all could keep my great niece Amy in prayer, I'd appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely, Thank you. Do we have any others? Any others? Um, I don't have permission to share, so I will use anonymous. Um, we have a, a folk, a person who is caretaker of their parents, and that's got to be a very stressful, difficult time for them, juggling their own life as well as taking care of parents. It's tough, and uh, it weighs on the heart after a while. And so prayers for that individual uh, and their siblings that, as they may be involved. Um, how about praises? Somebody, somebody got to praise. We got to have somebody got to praise. Some, somebody? Mm-mm. We had terrific, whatever you call it yesterday. Plenty. It seemed like we were here for a long time, but we got a lot done, and we've got some plenty of things that we're hoping to accomplish Yes. as we move forward, so everybody, we need everybody's help. Absolutely. All hands on deck, baby. Because we work. Yeah, the, what's, what Patty is talking about is yesterday uh, the board of directors gathered for a planning event. I mistakenly called it strategic planning, and those are two different things. So what we did yesterday was we came together as a board and we brainstormed ideas, whether it was outreach, whether it was marketing, whether it was this or that. We brainstormed ideas on how this church can get out of these walls and into the community. Now we have pride, we got that. Okay, that's a given, twice a year at least. But there are other things that uh, we talked about, did, we brainstormed, and we finally narrowed down some things that our church can get focused on and moving forward with. Y'all, your board, your board worked their backsides off. And breakfast at Famous Anthony's wasn't that bad either. <laughs> um, but yeah, they worked really, really hard yesterday, and they were tired. And uh, they did about three, three and a half hours just about of work. 
And um, I am so excited for them. And I'll tell you what, folks, it is an incredible blessing to have a board with as much passion as your board has. Their passion ignites my passion even more. And I'm so thankful for them. So I give God praise for them. Um, and he doesn't know I'm going to do this. Um, but sometimes we don't thank our volunteers enough. We don't. Mr. Mike, yeah, he doesn't know I was going to do this. I was kind of hoping he'd be here today. Um, I want to give special praises and thanks to God for Mike Simpson. This man has given of himself so much for the children's church, for this church period. He has worked diligently and from the very bottom of his soul for this church. Talk about passion. He has it. He has a passion for the children and their learning about Jesus, and he has a passion for this church. And so I give thanks to you, Mr. Mike. Can we, can we just give thanks to you? We appreciate you and all the work that you have done. Thank you. Um, wow. Thank you. He had no idea I was going to do that. So. I didn't ask him ahead of time. I hope he's all right. Yeah. Um, what is it? Ask for forgiveness? Do it and then ask forgiveness <laughs> later. But yeah. Um, thank, thank you, sir. I have praises for this church. I have praises for new life. If you look outside now, I know pollen's killing allergies, all right? But the trees are starting to bloom. The rain is washing away pollen. And yes, there will be a time when the pollen goes away for, for a few months. But all around us are signs of new life. And it's beautiful. I have praises for that. Are there any unspoken prayers, praises? Thank you. You know what I'm going to say. Look around uh, out there in Cyberland. I'm going to come closer to you. Um, if there is something on your heart, please, that, that you want to pray or praise about, please let us know. Uh, you can email the church. You can call in and leave a message. You can Facebook message the church. Uh, many of you have my, my personal Facebook page as well as others. All it takes is a, a little note to uh, anyone, and we will get that, and we will make sure that we pray for you uh, in the situation and praise with you. God loves to dance, y'all. God loves to dance, and God wipes away our tears. But out there in Cyberland, I just wanted you to know that we are here for you. And in Cyberland, if you're not able to see the hands that were raised, please don't ever forget. Don't ever forget. This church could use your prayers. Your pastor could use your prayers, definitely. Um, and just pray for the folks in the church that we continue to move forward, that we continue to be about the work of love in the world. Just pray. Pick somebody. Pick something in the church. God hears our prayers. Let's go to God. Loving God, thank you for today. Thank you for another opportunity to be here, Lord, to worship you, to learn more of you and your desire for us. To worship, to love. Thank you, Lord, for you. I pray, Lord, that you would be with each person, either here, present, Lord, or each person online that is watching or will watch. And each person that is yet to know us as we reach out with you and your love to the world. Be with him. Be with Mr. Mike's nephew, niece, niece. Lord, it's tough. It's tough sometimes, Lord, when we're pulled in so many different directions. Just pray you would hold them close, Lord. We praise your name, Lord, for a board that is passionate about you and doing that work of love. Hold this church, Lord, close to your heart. Give us wisdom and courage, Lord, 
to be about the work of love in the world. Help us to keep you and your love the main thing. Let it be the main thing. We love you, Lord. We praise your name. In your holy name. As we come to the place where we are giving our gifts to God, it's going to allow us to share love and build community so that what's put in here, whether it's mailed here in the form of a check or whether it is given by PayPal or cash, we have an opportunity to take the love and the community that we build here and take it outside these walls. We pray, Lord, that, I mean, excuse me, we pray that even if you are able to just simply bless the basket, please do so. And online, I, I ask for you to pray. I ask for you to pray about the basket. Pray about the gifts that we receive and that we will receive so that we can share love and build community in this world.
Loving God, thank you for these gifts. Thank you for the gift of music. Thank you that Rebecca gives her time and her talent and her energies and her gift to you. As a part of this um, offering time, Lord, it does remind us of just what we can do when we give. Our time, talents, and energies, Lord, especially these that are in the basket, Lord, those that will be mailed in, those that will be given via PayPal, the money that will come, Lord, we thank you. Bless this money, Lord. Bless the gifts. Bless the talents, the energies, and the time. May it help, Lord, the world to know your love. Our scripture reading for today comes from John chapter 12, verses 20 through 33. Now there were some Greeks among those who went up to worship at the festival. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, with a request. Sir, they said, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went to tell Andrew. Andrew and Philip, in turn, told Jesus. Jesus replied, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, or truly, truly, I tell you, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. Anyone who loves their life will lose it, while anyone who hates their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me. And where I am, my servant also will be. My father will honor the one who serves me. Now my soul is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour? No. It was for this very reason I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and will glorify it again. The crowd that was there and heard it said it had thundered. Others said an angel had spoken to him. Jesus said, this voice was for your benefit, not mine. Now is the time for judgment on this world. Now the prince of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to show the kind of death he was going to die. A root, a shoot, and a dirty boot. Uh -huh. I love any opportunity to talk about gardens and seeds and things like that. And I'll get to that in a moment. So, in the scripture for today, it's six days before the Passover. Jesus went to Bethany for a special dinner given in his honor. A woman, at that time, at that dinner, a woman named Mary poured out expensive perfume on Jesus' feet to anoint him. And Judas grumbles about the money and it not for that perfume and it not being used for the poor. The chief priests are upset that Jesus' reign has raised Lazarus from the dead. I'm not going to hear that story. And... Um, because of that, many of Jewish folks were believing in Jesus. So the plot to kill Jesus has thickened. Absolutely. And the next day, <clears throat> Jesus arrives in Jerusalem. Thanks, Palm Sunday, and we'll talk about that next week. So there are some things that have happened that have led up to this very moment. Jesus calls out Judas as a betrayer. He walks on water. He feeds 5,000. There's a ton of folks questioning who is this Jesus, and yet many give testimony to him. Jesus has healed a man born blind. Lazarus has been raised from the dead. And now Jesus is predicting his own death. And 
Jesus' disciples are screaming his visitors. They're screaming. They know that folks are plotting to kill Jesus. You see, some Greeks, which sometimes is a generic term for non-Jewish people, they've traveled to, to, to Jerusalem and they, for this Passover time, and they want to see Jesus. Don't really know why. Don't know if it's to honor Jesus, worship Jesus, kill. We don't know. We do know that the assumption is they do want to honor Jesus, not kill him. But what we do know is that Jesus uses this, this time, uses this time as an opportunity to teach folks, especially dis the disciples, of his own glorification and death. And he uses a metaphor. He says, truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. If a seed dies, it bears much fruit. Am I the only one that kind of scratches your head at that? But see, there's another head scratcher, one that I have struggled with my entire life. Anyone who loves their life will lose it, while anyone who hates their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. What? Why such metaphors about loss and life? It's kind of confusing, but it, it, it made me wonder about loss. I mean, like, how many of you have had, like, the perfect job? The absolute perfect job. The company is going to downsize or going to go in a different direction, and they've got to let you go. It's ripped away. Or, how about this one? We have the most wonderful friendship in the world. At least we think we do. And we find out that our best friend is more like a fiend. We find out that friend has backstabbed us and has been a part of gossiping and untruths that some folks spread about us. Or, or maybe someone has been the, ter the caretaker of another person stricken with cancer. Not only has the the person with cancer's life been ripped away from them, but the caretaker has had to give up parts of their own life to be beside their loved one. Loss, giving up a part of our lives, change. Change, all of this is a part of our lives. And I don't think it's ever going to go away. Somebody once said that the only thing constant in the world is change. You ever heard something like that before? I have. Even death is part of our living. But Jesus has the final word with all this. We know the crucifixion is coming, but Jesus reminds us that he will be raised up. That is amazing. Jesus has defeated death. He first uses the seed metaphor, then he uses the hate-love statement, but those are not necessarily only about loss. They're also about renewal. I sat with this idea of a seed and I had an amazing aha moment. Jesus didn't just die. He won't just die. He will be raised from the dead. And because he was raised from the dead and lives once more, death has been defeated and it is because of him that much fruit will be born. Yeah, I love an opportunity to talk about seeds and gardens and things like that. The seed, seeds are pretty powerful. Have you ever seen how tiny a mustard seed is? It's an itty bitty little thing. Have you ever seen a straight pin? It's about as big as the head of a straight pin. Or those little red bugs that we used to get running around in the, in the yard and stuff. Those little things that they look like little dots on your leg and then the little dot starts moving. That's about how big a mustard seed is. Yeah, it's, yeah. But those mustard seeds, the plants that they can grow, those things are like six to eight feet tall and they get bigger than me. They get really big. Wow. Mm -mm, mm -mm -mm. And then there is bush beans. Y'all ever had the pleasure of growing bush beans? Actually, not growing them. How about picking them? That was 
I'm being sarcastic. Um, but I learned through bush beans and corn seeds, bush bean seeds and corn seeds and other kinds of seeds with my dad in his garden. I learned some pretty cool things about them. You see, the soil first has to be prepared. Fertilizer and we always used a big old truckload of cow um, uh, manure. And um, I can't tell you how many times my dad, um, when he would first get that manure in the ground and till it up with the soil, how many times he would told us we have to wear shoes. We have to wear shoes. Um, not just because the soil well, it might have been wet or tilled up or daddy didn't want us to mess up the soil he had so carefully prepared, but because there's poop in it. You know what I mean? And so it didn't matter if it was fertilized or not or the, or the middle of weed pulling season so that the plants can thrive or the end of the planting season, our shoes and daddy's boots always got dirty, always. And our hands and our knees and and our fingernails, y'all, I gotta tell you, when I would help daddy in the garden, my fingernails looked like I was growing a garden in them. I, and then I made the mistake of like wiping my face, I was always touching my face, I'd come out looking like, oh sorry, come out looking like I just had a fight with the bush beans. But um, anyway, it's no fun if you can't get a little bit dirty. The seed is planted. It begins to germinate and then, have you ever seen those videos where they show where plants germinate? It's like fast forward time elapsed mm -hmm. or whatever they call it. No matter where a seed is planted, in what direction it's planted, this vine looking thing is always going to go downward first. That's, it's going to pop out of the seed and it's going to go down to form the roots. Okay, And then soon there's another vine looking thing that's going to pop out of the top. No matter where it is, it's going to go upward. No matter where. And then over time, the stem forms and the leaves and then the blossoms and then the beans. But none of this is possible without the seed dying first. In order for a plant to become a plant, the seed has to die. Ah. It's got to go through loss in order for the plant to be renewed and bear fruit. So when I think about loss, like that perfect job, right? I'm reminded of the opportunities that I had. Like I worked for customer service at, at a particular satellite company in Christiansburg. I don't want to name the name. But anyway, it was customer service for satellite. And um, I'm about as good at technical stuff as that tree out yonder. But what I did realize is that customer service was my thing. I saved, I'm proud of this, I probably shouldn't say, but I'm proud of it. We had a customer call in, it was a five-star customer, and he said, if you can't help me get my stuff fixed, I'm not going to use the words he used, but I'm going to throw this stuff out into the bleepity bleep bleep road, and y'all can do whatever you want to, and you can put it where the sun don't shine. I mean, he was letting me have it. And don't you know, I realized, after that call was over, that it was like he and I had been long lost best friends. So I can't, I, I realized I lost that part. I didn't lose the job. I, I left it on my own, but I realized that in that job, I wasn't very good at one thing, but I was doggone good at another. So sometimes losing a job can make you realize who you are and what you're good at. And that, and that friendship, a friendship oh, that might be a theme, it might be a way to open up, uh, it might be a way to open up a connection to a new friend who will defend you when you're not in the room or the caretaker. Understanding that my caring for another person is not necessarily a loss, but an incredible gift of time and love the other one needed at that very moment. Because you know what, when you're taking care of somebody else, it's hard to know. It is hard to, it's hard to see the gift that you're giving them. So we may lose time 
a little bit of time maybe going to the movies or may lose a little bit of energy getting in the car and going over to our friend's house or we may lose a little bit of data on our phone to call somebody and say, hey, I was thinking about you. But the flip side of that coin is, look what you're doing. Look what is blossoming. Renewal. Loss and renewal. Jesus is, that's what he was talking about. And that hate thing, that hate the life statement, for me, it's not necessarily that I'm literally hating my life and wearing a burlap bag and sitting in ashes and crying all the time. For me, it's about priorities and intentions. If we hold so tightly to our own wants and desires, we have no room for living the kind of life that Jesus wants and desires for us, the kind of life rooted in love. A life lived in love is the point. Love is the form uh, that, let me back that up a little bit. Time, talent, energy, wisdom, and so much more. That is the form of love. It's the fruit we bear. Then I thought about it again, and I was like, Jesus has planted within us a seed of love. We go through challenges and loss. We get our boots dirty. And as we form our roots, we begin to germinate into the person that the Holy One is calling us to be. Disciples, which means you are. It does take a bit of work, y'all. It, it's messy and it's dirtyish. Because you know what? Relationships are just tricky, right? They're just tricky. They can be messy. They can be ugly and it can downright break our hearts. But the renewal part of that is working through it. The renewal part of that is understanding who we are and who we've been called to be and do. The planting and the pulling of weeds is messy. But when we do those things, we thrive. We allow space for the seeds to do their thing, for the plants to do their thing. And the parts that don't serve our service, ah, we pluck those bad boys right on out of there. And my daddy, he used to mulch them up and put them back into the soil. Imagine that. I, all of a sudden, I had the Lion King in my head with the... <laughs> um, anyway, sorry. I'm going to come back. As we reach for the sun, the S-O-N, the H-O-L-Y, the D-I-V-I-N-E, our love can begin to bloom and blossom. Then when we take that love out of these walls, out of these doors, which is what your board was doing yesterday, finding ways to be organized and moving forward to take that love out of here. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm going to start preaching here in a minute. It's because, dog, go. Your board is excited, and the work that they did to get this church focused on taking the love out of these doors is amazing. It's going to take all hands on deck. When we take love out of these stores, and the fruit begins to grow. This week, friends, may we take the love that we have been given and allow it to germinate within each of us. May we walk with the Holy One, learning more of the divine each day. Jesus. Thank God Jesus has made should I. Let alone the Holy One. May we seek to bear the fruit that we have been called to bear. May we share this love this week. Beloved, may we just share love. Amen. Amen. Those online, this is your opportunity to Go ahead and get your cracker or your juice or whatever it is that you wish to take communion with, uh, with us. Um, love. I will never stop preaching about love. I will also never stop preaching about the work outside of these walls that is rooted in love. But that love came... And the ultimate love came in the form of the 
crucifixion, death, burial, and resurrection. The night before Jesus was crucified, he gathered with those who had loved and followed him for that meal. At some point in that meal, Jesus lifted the bread from the table. He gave thanks for it. He blessed it. He broke it. And he said, this is my body, literally broken, literally open for you. Eat ye all of it. And at some point during that meal, he lifted the cup. He blessed it. He gave thanks for it. And he turned to them and he said, this is my blood shed for you as a symbol, as a sign of a new and everlasting covenant for the forgiveness of sins. And each time you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, do so in remembrance of me. Loving God, thank you so very much for your love. Thank you so very much, Lord, for you. May these symbols, may these, this cup, this wafer, may they be symbols of your love, and may they always remind us that you love us unconditionally. Amen. And in this church, as in all the other times we have taken communion, we have an opportunity to proclaim the mystery of our faith by saying, Christ, Christ has died, died. Christ, Christ has risen. risen. Christ, Christ is, is coming, coming again. again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, that is some good news. That is some good news.